What I'm going to be doing in this class is first I'm going to chat a little about what are analytic functions. What's the concept here? Why, what's the advantage? Why are they good? Why do we have them? And the whole idea behind that is to show you their, their capabilities so you can make a decision where in your organization, where in your applications you can use these sorts of things. Once we have the basics for what that's all about, we're then going to go into the syntax and we'll start simple and we'll build on the syntax and give you many, many different examples and show you all sorts of possibilities on how Oracle analytic functions can make your life easier. So that's the goal. Okay, let's start off. The first thing to know about analytic functions is this is not something that's brand new. This has been around for many years with Oracle. Oracle introduced this whole concept way back in Oracle 8 with 26 different analytic functions. And what are analytic functions? We'll get into that coming up in a little bit. And, and as a matter of fact, this was so well received that it was actually added to the ANSI standard back in 2003. So it's an ANSI SQL standard now, and Oracle has had it way before that. Even in Oracle 11, they have added some new analytic functions and extended the 26 to over 30 some odd analytic functions now. They made them more efficient, they make it run better, faster, and so on. So Oracle has continued to support analytic functions and expand their functionality. Now, average. You're going to see average, min, max, sum. That's going to look to you a little bit like all your standard analytic fun uh, aggregate functions, rather. So you'll have your normal aggregate functions which will be handled appropriately. And, uh, and but the, these are far more sophisticated, even though you use the same terms. Not only do they have average and min, max, and so on, but they have things like variance and standard deviation and ranking uh, and uh, cumulative capabilities, all sorts of nice features. And it's all those additional features that give us the power of these analytic functions. So we're going to get into the analytic functions, but before we do, I just tell you that basically do you need analytic functions to get the results you want? No, you don't. Generally, you don't anyway. Generally, there are workarounds. If you didn't have analytic functions to compute all these things for you so nicely, you could have workarounds. There are two general types of workarounds. One is, okay, full detail data to your application and do what the analytic functions do, but do it in your application. That means you have to do more, not a new database, you've got to double it to that, you have to all the data to your application. That's not really what you want to do. The second workaround is use SQL, but use tricks and, and various different techniques in SQL that could get the same results as you get the analytic functions. There's just really no other way to do it in SQL, but some there is with workarounds. The problem with the workarounds is that it's a workaround. Oracle does not know what you're really trying to do. So you're doing something and you're working around the problem, but because Oracle doesn't know, it just does what you tell it. And it's generally, first of all, much more obtuse, much more difficult to read the code. The problem is it's generally much slower. But with analytic functions, you're telling Oracle exactly what you want. I want running totals. I want ranking. Oracle knows exactly what you want, and it can do it extremely efficiently. So that's the, that's the important point here. So we don't want to work with workarounds. We'd rather not have to do that. Uh, we'd rather not pass all the data to our application. So Oracle introduced these analytic functions to do it all in SQL. Now, when I say it's much simpler, yes, it's much simpler once you go through a little training, which we're doing here today. In the beginning, you'll look at it. It will be a little bit strange, the syntax, but once you get used to it, it's vastly simpler, simpler than the workarounds. Okay. So what do they do? What do the analytic functions do? Provide much easier ways to analyze data. Okay, that's the first thing. 
That's what we talked about, a much easier way to analyze the data without work doing these workarounds. And then what do they analyze? They can give you cumulative totals, running totals, cumulative salary within the department, cumulative sales by day through the month, running totals. Okay. They also give you percentages within a group. So if you want to know what is this employee's uh, salary and then what percent of their department salary does this employee represent? Or what is this salesperson sales and what percent of the total division sales does that one salesperson represent? So you can easily do that sort of thing. Now I remember you may be thinking, gee, I've already done this. Yes, you have, but you've used tricks. You've used workarounds, and we'll go over not only the syntax for the analytic functions, but also a couple of the workarounds that, that many of you may have been using to get it, and you'll see the difference in the syntax, and, and, uh, and, we'll talk, and also it would be much slower using the workaround, much faster using the analytic function. What else can it do? Rankings, first highest, second highest, third highest salesperson within the division, first highest, second highest, third highest salesperson within the next division, and much, much more. Many other analytic functions besides just these. Okay, so that's basically the capabilities, and now we're going to get into some of the details. Okay, so let's get started here. To get started, we're going to take a very simple analytic function, and all we want to do in this one is generate cumulative salary, running totals. And if you look at the last column here, that's exactly what we have. We have running totals. Here we have a employee number, last name, and salary. So that's printed here. And then we're getting the sum of the salary and this keyword over is, is the key. Sum of salary looks like a standard aggregate function, but the keyword over is what turns the aggregate function into an analytic function. So when you see sum of salary with the keyword over, you know this is an analytic function. And over has several different options. Well, the one option we're going to look at in this example is over with an order by. The order by says I'm going to order by employee number and I'm going to sum the salaries by employee number. Since I'm summing them within the aggregate, uh, within the analytic function by employee number, that order, then I want to order my outer query by the same thing, employee number. We're going to see that a lot where however you do the analytic function, you're going to need to sort the data in the same way. So I'm ordering by EMPNO, so here's my employee number two, three, four, and so on. And if I come over here, I see employee number two has a salary of eight, and I'm summing them with running totals, so the first cumulative salary is eight. The next employee is another eight, eight plus eight is 16. The next one is 12, 16 plus 12 is 28, and so on. So this is a very easy way to get cumulative running totals. Now let's take a look. I'm going to go over here to SQL Developer, and I'm going to take this little query. This is the query we just talked about, where I'm doing the sum of salary over order by EMPNO. I'm going to run that, and what do I have? I'm ordering it by EMPNO, and I'm doing my salary, and here's my running total for the salary. Very straightforward. Was there a workaround? How did you do this before? Yes, there was a workaround. The workaround is pretty strange. Here's the workaround. Let's look at this workaround and see what it does. Notice it says, uh, select. I'm selecting employee number, last name, and salary. And this is E1 dot, so my outer query is on the employee table E1. See that? That's my outer query. And that gives me my first columns. 